Hey Pioneer, happy Tuesday. Miss Lissandra here to participate in the whole school read. I'm going to start on page 75, chapter 21, titled A Painting. Above Louis's bed hung a painting, or rather a copy of a painting, of a boy tugging on a rope tied to a calf who was resisting being led. It looked like a gentle tug of war between the boy and the calf, each equally determined. Behind them were golden haystacks and open fields with chickens pecking here and there. Two other boys stood near watching the boy and the calf. Another copy of this painting had hung in the hospital waiting room outside the infant intensive care unit where Louis's parents had spent many hours after he was born. Something about the struggle of the boy and of the calf had spoken to them and calmed them. The artist's name was Winslow Homer. Chapter 22. Something the matter? It was spring, the early days of spring, when the shock of bright green sprouting from the ground and from trees were was new and cheery, and when daylight was filtered through a gauzy curtain. Louis was out in the yard with Winslow, who was galloping about clumsily, and it was one of those good days when everything seemed right in the world. Nora came by. She said she was just out walking, which is what she always said. She appeared smaller and more vulnerable without her heavy black coat and boots and yellow hat. And as she came through the gate, she seemed worried. Something the matter? Louis asked. Nah, not really. Winslow eagerly bumped his head against her arm until Nora petted him. She smiled in spite of herself. He's so used to you now, Louis said. I think he was expecting you. He kept looking up and down the street. Aw, makes me sad. Sad? Why sad? I thought you'd be happy about that. Well, what's going to happen to him? Max said you can't keep him here much longer. He's getting too big and too loud. This wasn't a surprise to Louis. His parents had brought it up earlier in the week. Winslow was getting big and even the makeshift pen they'd added to the back of their garage did not have enough room for him. And his new loud brain was becoming annoying, not only to the neighbors, but also to Louis's parents. Nora leaned her head against Winslow's neck and her own black curls mixing in with Winslow's gray and black tufts. I bet you have to get rid of him. He will never be this free and happy again, he will probably get sick and die of sadness. Louis tugged at Winslow's head, pulling it away from Nora. Why do you always expect the worst, he said. Nora pulled Winslow's head back toward her. To be prepared. Why do you always stupidly expect the best? Stupidly? Louis yanked Winslow's head back again wrapping his arm tightly around Winslow's neck. I don't always stupidly expect the best. I worry about the worst, but I hope for the best. Nora stood very still, her arms stiff at her sides. Well, you must be disappointed a lot. And you must be sad a lot. Am not. I'm realistic, she said and you're being me. Am not, Louis leaned in close to Winslow's face. Am I Winslow? Am I being mean? Winslow's lips flapped and he sucked his teeth. See, Nora said, he thinks you are being mean. He agrees with me. No, he doesn't. He agrees with me. Winslow butted each of them with his head and kicked his hind legs in the air. Chapter 23, A Letter from Gus. A collection of Gus's postcards and letters was kept in a blue bowl in the living room. Every now and then, 
when Louis or his parents were especially missing Gus, they would select one to reread. Louis chose one addressed to him to take up to his room. Hey, Louis, I miss you, Louis. Are you getting older? Don't get too old before I come home, okay? I wish I could be there to see you and mom and dad. I miss home. What's this here? What's this I hear about a donkey? Really? A donkey? Today, I ate a snake. Really, I had to kill it and cook it and eat it. Don't tell mom. Remember me, Gus. Louis read the letter while lying on Gus's bed. When he finished, he pretended he was Gus lying there. He kicked off his shoes from the back like Gus did. He tossed a pillow over at his own bed like Gus used to. He regarded Gus's trophies lined up on the bookcase and Gus's baseball hats stained with sweat. Louis opened the closet and smelled the smell of Gus on his clothes. He chose Gus's favorite football jersey, the black and red one with number 21 on it, and put it on. He stood in front of the mirror and said, I am Gus. And then he lay down again on Gus's bed and felt the enormous absence of his brother. Chapter 24, Don't Go. With the arrival of warmer days and nights, Winslow was now kept in a pin attached to the to the garage. Louis's father had fashioned an overhang that extended from the garage roof and he had enclosed part of the pin to give Winslow shelter from wind and rain and sun. Another solution would, to, would have to be found soon because theirs was not a yard in which you could easily keep a donkey. Not only was the yard too small, but it was also too close to the neighbors. Winslow was now practicing his brain, emitting croaky, loud honks and eaws throughout the day. Neighbors begged for mercy. The donkey is a cute fella, I'll give you that. But the noise he makes gives me a migraine right here behind my eyes. I think he's practicing a warning, Louis said, when a stranger is around. You mean a stranger like the mailman, a delivery man, a cat, a squirrel? See, sometimes he seems to be a uh, singing, one neighbor said. I've noticed that, Louis agreed. But it's awful singing. If that's singing, then he needs lessons. Most annoyed was Miss Tooley, who lived next door on the opposite side of Mac and his family. Miss Tooley had, had never been friendly, so it was not a surprise that she could complain, that she would complain. When Louie's mother had taken a pot of soup to her one day, Miss Tooley said, no, thank you. I don't like neighbor stuff. There was never a sign of Mr. Tooley and only rarely were there other visitors. In the fall, when Louis had offered to, to rake the leaves from her yard, she said, leaves, schmeaves, let them be. In the winter, when Louis had finished shoveling their own sidewalk, he car carried on shoveling Mrs. Tooley's. She opened the door and said, I'm not paying you. That's okay, so stop it. Now, Miss Tooley complained about Winslow. She would fling open the kitchen window and shout, that donkey wakes up the baby. Make it stop that noise. Mac's family did not complain, but Mac did mention that Winslow might prefer living with other animals. What about your Uncle Pete's farm? Isn't that where the donkey came from in the first place? Louis could not bear the thought of Winslow leaving. Who would look after him as well as he did? What if Winslow got sick again? What if Winslow thought Louis was abandoning him? At night, Louis looked over at Gus's empty bed and thought, first Gus goes, now Winslow? Don't go, don't go, don't go. Louis whispered into his pillow. 
Thank you for joining me readers. Until next time, have a great day.